The reunion hall buzzed with chatter and forced laughter as former classmates greeted each other, desperate to impress. I nursed a scotch, swirling the amber liquid as I scanned the room. Most faces were vaguely familiar, relics of a life I had left behind long ago. That was until my gaze landed on her. Marlena. She looked every bit as stunning as she had in high school. Blonde hair cascading over tanned shoulders, designer dress hugging her slender figure. Our eyes locked for a moment, and I could have sworn I saw the faintest smirk crease those perfectly painted lips. Before I could make my exit, Marlena was gliding towards me, hips swaying with practiced confidence. Well, well, if it isn't Everett Collins, the man who was going to change the world with his brilliant software designs. Her voice dripped with condescending honey. I forced a tight smile. Marlena, you're looking, well? I am, aren't I? She laughed, the sound like shattering crystal against my ears. Although I have to say, the rumors about your fall from grace have been most intriguing. I tensed at the thinly veiled insult but refused to be baited. Funny how quickly rumors can change. Marlena arched one perfectly plucked eyebrow, feigning interest. Oh, do tell. Leaning in closer, I matched her sickly sweet tone. Let's just say certain projects have been wildly successful of late. I'd say my fall was merely the catalyst for something far grander than you could ever imagine. Her eyes narrowed fractionally as she studied my face, searching for any tells of dishonesty. Finding none, her crimson lips pursed into a thin line of displeasure. Well, isn't that just wonderful for you, Marlena said at last, the words cloyingly insincere. I drained the last of my scotch, savoring the smoky burn at the back of my throat. It really is, but enough about me. How's Derek doing these days? Hopefully his real estate ventures are more fruitful than his previous indiscretions. The barb hit its mark as a flash of anger blazed across Marlena's features before she regained her composure. We're doing just fine, thank you. I'm sure you are, I lied with a tight smile, reveling in her obvious discomfort. Perhaps we can discuss it more over dinner sometime. My treat, of course. Marlena opened her mouth to reply, but seemed to think better of it. With one final withering glare, she turned on her designer heel and disappeared into the crowd, her haughty laughter drowned out by the dull roar surrounding us. I couldn't resist a self-satisfied chuckle as I signaled the bartender for another drink. This was just the start. Marlena and her pretentious life were about to be brought crumbling down around her designer stilettos. And I couldn't wait to savor every delicious moment of her descent. The memories ambushed me as I tossed back the last of my scotch, a bitter reminder of how far I'd fallen after my divorce from Marlena. It started with losing my job at Collins Tech, the software company I had built from scratch. Turns out my business partner and best friend Thomas was sleeping with Marlena behind my back. Once they gained control, they wasted no time forcing me out and liquidating my shares for pennies on the dollar. Sorry, old friend, Thomas had said with an insincere grimace. Just business. Just business, my ass. Marlena made sure it was personal, parading her affair brazenly in the press while reveling in my humiliation. My flourishing career ground to a halt as no reputable firm would touch the husband scorned by Marlena Monroe, Seattle's self-proclaimed tech queen. It didn't take long for the depression and drinking to set in after that. What little money I had went towards keeping a roof over my head and deciding which bills to pay through a constant hangover. One night, in a particularly drunken spiral, I found myself staring down at the near-empty whiskey bottle, considering just how much it would take to make the shame and anguish permanently disappear. That's when Derek's smug face appeared on the TV, proudly showing off his latest pretentious high-rise project with his prize on his arm. My ex-wife Marlena. She was draped in diamond jewelry, clearly delighted to be arm candy for the cocksure real estate mogul whose net worth dwarfed even my heyday. In that moment, something inside me hardened. A raw, primal determination ignited, burning through the drunken self-pity like a raging forest fire. If they thought I was finished, they were severely mistaken. I hurled the whiskey bottle across the room, shattering it against the wall. That was the last time I touched a drop of alcohol. From that night on, I poured every ounce of my being into hatching the perfect revenge. Using my last remaining funds, I secured a small office space and began developing the framework 
for a revolutionary new app. I worked tirelessly, recklessly spending what little savings I had on equipment and consulting fees to ensure the tech was flawless. It was a long, brutal road littered with setbacks and not-so-subtle sabotage attempts from my adversaries. More than once, I questioned my sanity, but the thought of watching the vindicated smirks melt from Marlena and Derek's faces after I'd risen from the ashes they created kept me focused like a laser. When I eventually pitched the prototype to investors, there were the obligatory chuckles and headshakes at first, but then the app's capabilities started to sink in rendering the room into a stunned silence. Before long, term sheets were being feverishly drafted as moguls shoved wads of cash at me, awakening the giant they had mistakenly thought was long dormant. As my fortune and company began its inexorable rise, tendrils of disquiet rippled through Marlena's circle as word spread of my staggering comeback. Though she maintained her poised exterior, I noticed the first faint cracks in her facade. The game had officially begun, and this time I didn't intend to play nice. My encounter with Marlena at the reunion lit a fire under me, one that wouldn't be extinguished until she faced the same public ridicule and ruin I had endured at her hands. In the days after, I found myself unable to shake the memory of that smugly satisfied smile she had tried and failed to mask. It fueled my determination to not just succeed, but to utterly crush her in the process which is why I was understandably hesitant when Celia Ramirez, a well-respected business consultant, requested a meeting just days later. Look, I'll cut right to it, Celia stated bluntly as she took the chair opposite my desk. Your app is brilliant, but your company is operating on fumes. You need an influx of capital and guidance, stat. I leveled her with a cautious look. Forgive me if I'm skeptical about taking advice from someone I've just met, Miss Ramirez. It's Celia she responded with the hint of a smile. And you should be skeptical of anyone trying to ingratiate themselves. I'm not here to be your friend, Everett. I'm here because I see a potential gold mine that if handled correctly, could revolutionize this industry. Her frank admission gave me pause. There was no ego or pretense behind her words, only pragmatic self-interest, a commodity that was disherably rare in my world. All right, Celia, you've got my attention. I said at last. What did you have in mind? Over the next hour, Celia laid out a comprehensive strategy to acquire significant new funding and rapidly scale my company's operations. Her analysis was razor sharp, brutally picking apart my current trajectory while offering data-driven solutions to correct our course. By the time she finished her presentation, I was virtually spellbound. Perhaps more importantly, I realized I had finally found someone capable of helping me achieve my grand ambitions. Why are you so invested in my company's success? I asked once she had concluded. Because I believe in rewarding courage and determination, Celia replied flatly. You've displayed both in spades by risking everything to create what you have so far. I'd simply be fool not to capitalize on that kind of disruptive vision. A wry smile tugged at my lips. There's more to it than that, isn't there? You seem hell-bent on revolutionizing the industry, but why this one in particular? For a brief moment, Celia's features hardened as haunting emotion flickered across her face. Whatever demons lurked in her past remained unspoken, however. Let's just say I have my reasons for wanting to shake up the smug, self-important elites who think they control this sector, she said cryptically. But that's a story for another time. Right now, the question is whether you're ready to be an uncompromising pack leader in that fight. I held her piercing gaze for a long beat. You have no idea how ready I am, Celia. And with that, we shook on a partnership that would vindicate us both while bringing the downfall of everyone who underestimated the sheer depths of our ambition. Including that snake, Marlena. They all were going to pay for their arrogance and deceit, and with Celia by my side, I wouldn't rest until my revenge was complete. With Celia's strategic guidance, everything accelerated at a blistering pace over the next few months. We secured major funding from investors, dazzled by our app's potential, and a resource-sharing deal with a tech giant. My team of engineers and developers could barely keep up with the deluge of new hires needed to accommodate our exponential growth. Our small office became a bustling hive of productivity as we worked ridiculous hours 
hammering out new software iterations. Not that I was complaining. This all-consuming obsession was my penance, an existence fueled by the pure drive to realize my ultimate retribution. There would be no excessive celebrating or self-indulgence until Marlena and her cohorts faced the same devastating downfall they once so gleefully orchestrated against me. You know, we should probably discuss some preliminary marketing and PR efforts, Celia suggested one evening as we burned the proverbial midnight oil. The app's launch is only a couple months away. I waved her off dismissively. Don't worry about any of that. Once the tech speaks for itself, this company will be cast into the stratosphere on its own merit. Celia arched an eyebrow skeptically. You seem awfully confident considering the established juggernauts we'll be going up against. They're arrogant dinosaurs stuck in their ways, I countered, which is why they'll be too oblivious to see the meteor that's about to wipe their kind from this earth. At that, the faintest of smiles ghosted across Celia's lips. You make a compelling point, though I do hope you'll save at least one of those corporate skyscrapers for me to knock over. I matched her conspiratorial grin. I'll allow you first dibs on demolition duty. As it turned out, my bravado proved well-founded. The app's official release was a certifiable smash hit, shattering digital download records within its first week. Forget clever PR campaigns, the media coverage was utterly rapturous, fueled by user acclaim for the app's sleek functionality and seamless integration. Seemingly overnight, my net worth skyrocketed into the billions as established tech titans scrambled to either emulate or outright acquire my company's coveted platform but I rebuffed their advances at every turn, secure in the knowledge that my creation's superiority had irrevocably altered the industry landscape. And just as I suspected, the tectonic shift didn't go unnoticed in Marlena's circle. Her usual haughty social media presence took on a distinctly humbled tone as reports of my staggering success became inescapable. One pointed photo in particular, a paparazzi shot of Marlena looking utterly crestfallen while being comforted by Derek on their monster yacht, brought me a satisfaction more intoxicating than the finest scotch. The great Marlena Monroe, once the untouchable queen of the Seattle tech scene, had been definitively dethroned. As the saying goes, the best revenge is living well. And I intended to take my sweet time relishing in the complete erasure of Marlena's arrogant legacy. But of course, the true vindication was still to come. Her public downfall was simply the opening salvo in my master plan for ruination. After allowing her a few more meager tastes of my unmitigated triumph, it would be time to obliterate what remained of her pathetic existence. Marlena had sown the wind years ago during our divorce. Now, she and her equally loathsome cohorts would reap the whirlwind of my relentless vengeance. My brilliant tech app was just the opening salvo in obliterating Marlena's world. As it turned out, the behind-the-scenes demolition of her sham life alongside Derek had been underway for months, meticulously orchestrated by Celia. You didn't think I was solely focused on your company's success, did you? Celia asked with a sly grin one afternoon as we reviewed the latest financial projections. Getting you to this level was simply step one. I arched an intrigued eyebrow. Do tell. Celia swiveled her laptop to face me, bringing up a series of confidential records and incriminating photos. Once we were gaining traction, I redirected some resources to do some deeper digging into your adversary's affairs. What I uncovered should ensure their ruin is swiftly underway. My eyes rapidly scanned the damning evidence she had accumulated. Embezzlement, shady land deals, ownership kickbacks, flagrant ethics violations, it appeared that Derek's entire empire was a veritable house of cards constructed from illegally obtained funds and backroom cronyism. How were you able to get your hands on all this? I asked, unable to mask my impressed tone. Celia shrugged nonchalantly. I have my methods for obtaining information others would prefer remain buried. Let's just say I leveraged a few unconventional assets to follow the money trail. Remind me never to get on your bad side, I said with a low whistle. Though I can't say Derek and Marlena don't have this karmic reckoning coming after what they pulled. Oh, they'll get exactly what they deserve, Celia stated coldly. Once the authorities get a whiff of these transactions during their inevitable divorce proceedings, the dominoes should start falling into place. Sure enough, 
it wasn't long before the first hairline cracks became evident in their once gilded facade. Reports began swirling of legal pressures, forcing Derek to liquidate major assets and properties at a frantic pace. His bullish arrogance swiftly eroded as he shuttled between high-priced attorneys while putting out one PR firestorm after another. Marlena's social media presence took an even more cringeworthy slide. The filtered photo shoots and trendy hotspot check-ins were slowly replaced with stories about her unchanging love and loyalty to Derek, a desperate facade if I'd ever seen one. When photos finally emerged of her looking distraught and frazzled alongside her embattled husband, I couldn't resist reveling in the moment. I immediately sent the images to Celia with a triumphant caption, and so it begins. Her reply was succinct but utterly satisfying. The best is yet to come. True to her vow, Celia's campaign of destruction only escalated over the following weeks. More whistleblowers and document leaks fanned the flames of Derek's financial inferno. With each Ethics Commission inquiry and IRS audit, more of the wealthy elite distanced themselves from the amplifying scandal to preserve their own reputations. It was gratifying to witness the maestro at work as the mighty Marlena Monroe became more unhinged and isolated with every public ignominy against Derek. Whatever remaining fragments of dignity she clung to rapidly disintegrated each time another of his ill-gotten acquisitions was seized or his name dragged through the mud. The duplicitous queen of Seattle tech and her unscrupulous partner in crime were getting the karmic treatment they deserved, a protracted and utterly humiliating freefall stripped of the trappings that had once heralded their power and status. But Celia and I both understood that this systematic devastation of their sordid empire was merely the opening act swings in a much grander exhibition of revenge still to come. It was only a matter of time before Marlena attempted to slither her way back into my orbit. I suppose her deluded ego still clung to the notion that I might somehow save her from the complete ruination I had precisely engineered. The chance encounter happened at a local charity gala Celia had convinced me to attend for positive PR purposes. As I worked the room, shaking hands and making shallow small talk, a too familiar figure appeared in my periphery. Everett! Marlena's voice rang out. I need to speak with you. I turned to face her, unable to stifle my smirk at her disheveled appearance. Her expensive gown seemed to hang limply, her excessive makeup a poor masquerade for the dark circles and anguish etched into her features. Well, well, if it isn't Seattle's fallen angel, I said, loud enough for those around us to hear. To what do I owe this displeasure? Marlena's eyes flashed with panic as she grabbed my arm pulling me away from the gathered crowd. Don't do this right now, she hissed quietly. We need to talk in private. Feigning reluctance, I allowed her to lead me towards a vacant terrace away from prying eyes and ears. The moment the door closed behind us, she dropped the act, clasping her hands together in desperation. Everett, please, you have to help me get out from under this, Marlena pleaded, her voice cracking with anguish. Derek's world is crumbling and taking me down with it, I've lost everything. I fought back a bark of merciless laughter at her pathetic sniveling. You rotten snake, this is exactly what you deserve after the stunt you pulled. You don't understand, she cried, hands trembling. Derek completely blindsided me with all of this shady business. I had no idea the depravity he had stooped to in building his empire. I'm just as much a victim in all this as anyone. Save your lies. I spat, feeling disgusted to have this simpering leech so close. We both know you were perfectly content being Derek's self-indulgent arm candy as long as the money lasted, just like you were with me, until someone richer came along. Marlena's eyes narrowed hatefully as her fragile victim act shattered. So that's what this has all been about? Some petty revenge plot to get back at me for leaving your unambitious ass? My answering grin was sharpener than a razor's edge. Not just you, my dearest Marlena. Any person arrogant enough to have underestimated my resolve is about to face the same merciless reckoning as you two frauds. Realization seemed to crash over Marlena as the final pieces clicked into place. Her face went pale, plump lips parting in stunned horror. You, you were behind all of this? She stammered weakly. Derek's downfall, everything? I slowly nodded, reveling in her slack-jawed expression. Please. 
Marlena whispered, tears slipping past her meticulously applied makeup. I'll do anything. Just help me. And I swear I'll. Whatever pitiful plea she prepared to make was cut off by my derisive laughter. You'll what? Leave me for the next wealthy fool to catch your wandering eye? No thanks, darling. Reaching into my tuxedo jacket, I retrieved a check that had become wrinkled through constant handling. I smoothed out the slip of paper, holding it up so she could see the amount, the final settlement from our divorce years earlier. This is what my life was worth to you, isn't it? I asked coldly. Just another trivial business transaction to cash out on before discarding me completely. Not waiting for a response, I ripped the check in half, letting the pieces flutter to the ground between us. Well, guess what, you miserable witch? I snarled, taking a threatening step towards her. This is the thanks you and your ilk deserve, to drown in the squalor and ignominy you so arrogantly inflicted on others. With a strangled cry, Marlena turned and fled, disappearing in a mascara-smeared flurry. I stood there a moment longer, catching my breath while basking in the sheer catharsis of finally eviscerating the demonic specter that had haunted my dreams for years. Finally, I had exercised the last of Marlena Monroe's vile presence from my life. Now, I could focus my energies on ensuring Derek's remaining existence was equally as unbearable. No amount of legal maneuvering or well-spun PR could save Derek from the epic downfall that Celia and I orchestrated. With each passing week, more lurid allegations and damning money trails linked back to his corrupt real estate empire. By the time the tech world's biggest annual conference arrived a few months later, Derek's reputation laid in ashes. He was a wealthy pariah, a cautionary tale of ambition perverted by greed and moral bankruptcy. Which is why I could barely contain my anticipatory glee when I learned he would be putting in a rumored appearance at the event, perhaps in one last grasp at attempting to resuscitate his decimated legacy. Word is the organizers were less than thrilled with Derek's plans, Celia told me the morning of my keynote address, especially after some anonymous sources provided them with a comprehensive dossier on his scandals. I raised an impressed eyebrow. You mean like the one you compiled single-handedly to detonate his criminal enterprises? Celia shrugged innocently. I have no idea what you're insinuating. I was simply doing my civic duty to ensure the right parties were made aware of a few ethical discrepancies. Chuckling under my breath, I double-checked my speech notes one final time. Every perfectly crafted line and subtle insinuation was engineered to drive the proverbial knife deeper into Derek's festering wounds. You about ready to apply the coup de grace, boss? Celia asked with a mischievous grin. Meeting her conspiratorial look with my own, I gave her a single resolute nod. More than ready. The main hall was packed by the time I took the stage, the hush of hushed conversations giving way to polite applause. Through the blinding stage lights, I instantly recognized Derek seated near the front, looking predictably smug despite his recent devastating PR pratfalls. Unfortunately for the arrogant prick, he was about to receive a very public education on humility. For the next 45 minutes, I relentlessly extolled the virtues of ethical conduct underpinning genuine innovation and industry leadership. Each carefully emphasized anecdote and thinly veiled subtweet landed like a calculated body blow against Derek's aura of entitlement. No amount of wealth or power can sustain an entity if that foundation is rooted in dishonesty and immorality, I declared, making unblinking eye contact with Derek. For all the tall buildings and contemporary architecture one can construct through graft and avarice, it merely amounts to an empire of sand, fated to crumble against the first stiff breeze of integrity. The crowd twice erupted into thunderous applause and cheers, buoyed by my apparent rallying cry against corporate malfeasance. All except one particularly enraged individual sitting rigidly amidst a sea of admirers. I could practically taste Derek's humiliation as his defiant glare shifted uncomfortably towards the masses who once courted his influence. With each uproarious ovation and lauded plaudits I received, his cash evaporated further like a melting ice cap. Finally, after fielding a few fawning audience questions, I noticed Derek abruptly rise from his seat and storm towards the exit shouldering past anyone who failed to part quickly enough for his unceremonious retreat. 
I smiled inwardly at the deliciously ironic image of this arrogant titan being reduced to such belligerent, self-important dismissal, the legendary Derek Brantford now utterly diminished to an angry old man yelling at clouds. As the disgraced mogul's flustered form disappeared into the lobby, I caught Celia's eye from the wings where she watched alongside the organizers. She greeted me with an approving wink and reaffirming nod. In that shared moment of understated triumph, I understood implicitly that Derek's pathetic exit marked a long-awaited end to our campaign of vengeance against my detestable adversaries. There would be no need to escalate further attacks or indignities to force his complete surrender. The once mighty real estate heavyweight who had so callously upended my life had been outmaneuvered at every turn, left with nothing except the bitter taste of ashes filling his overprivileged mouth. Whatever remained of his tarnished legacy was merely a vainglorious shell rooted in false opulence and vapid projections of power. For after everything Celia and I had methodically deconstructed over the years, Derek finally comprehended there was no coming back from this utter devastation of his kingdom. In the weeks following my vindication at the tech conference, life took on an entirely new meaning. With Derek's ruination complete, and Marlena fading into obscurity, the all-consuming obsession that had fueled me for so long finally loosened its grip. It was as though I had been treading water for years, only to finally stumble onto solid ground again. I could breathe freely, reconnect with my core values, and realign my perspective on what truly mattered. That's when the idea for the Everett Collins Foundation first took shape. After so many years grinding to uplift myself from the ashes of my former life, I was determined to use my success and resources to help others escape the cycles of adversity through education. You're serious about this philanthropy endeavor? Celia asked one afternoon as we discussed potential initiatives over coffee. Her usual stoic demeanor softened slightly with what seemed like pride. It's a rather abrupt change of course, even for you. I shrugged, surprising myself with how at peace I felt. Maybe. But after everything we went through to get here, it just feels right, like the missing piece in my life finally clicking into place. Celia studied me a moment, pale eyes narrowing inquisitively. Then, giving an almost imperceptible nod, she cleared her throat and changed the subject. Well, if we're doing this, we need to make a splash right out of the gates. I'm talking full court press media blitz to maximize exposure and cultivate those all-important wealthy donor relationships from the start. Despite her all-business tone, I recognized the unspoken gesture of support. For so long, we had locked arms to methodically annihilate our adversaries. Now, as unlikely as it seemed, we were pivoting to create something meaningful in the wake of those personal vendettas. It was the first time I truly appreciated the depth of trust that bonded us, forged from parallel trauma, yet tempering into something resilient and uncompromising. Perhaps that's why, some months later, as Celia and I stood on the podium to announce the Foundation's inaugural class, she squeezed my hand reassuringly just before I took the mic. For all the unpleasantness she had endured in her own past, in that moment her eyes shone with unmistakable pride and purpose. If Marlena or Derek took any solace in the subsequent newsreels of me embracing underprivileged kids and inspiring the next generation, they never showed it publicly. The disgraced royal couple had effectively been excised from polite society, forced to lick their wounds, and inevitable divorces in the shadows. With each new curriculum launch and scholarship fund that bore my foundation's name, another lavish property or asset was no doubt being seized from my former tormentors to help offset their mounting legal debts. Not that their protracted demise registered much more than a fleeting thought these days. My attentions were wholly consumed with shaping promising young minds, beginning a positive legacy neither Marlena nor Derek could ever tarnish again. On the rare occasion, I did allow my focus to drift back to them. It was with an odd sense of melancholic detachment. For all the misery they had inflicted through their hubris, karma had apparently decided another descent into complete destitution was punishment enough. Who was I to argue with such comedic poetic justice dealt to the once arrogantly untouchable power elite. In the end, Derek and Marlena amounted to cautionary tales, empty people 
galvanized by empty pursuits. Their lives flashed brightly and burned ferociously for a time, only to ultimately sputter out as insignificant embers in the periphery of those forging far more meaningful legacies. As for my own place in history, that was still being written. But with Celia at my side and the Foundation's promising trajectory, I felt confident the final chapters would stand as a testament to our shared resilience and the transformative power of using one's talents to lift up others. It was a path of redemption neither of us could have envisioned as we clawed our way from the depths of adversity and deception. Yet here we stood, bonded partners clearing an inspiring new trail born from the ashes of our former lives.